was born in New Jersey um, and was the youngest of eight kids um, and lost my parents rather early. Um, I was 13 when my mom passed away and 19 and a freshman at Penn State when my dad passed away. Um, it became clear very quickly uh, that I just didn't have the means to continue school. I didn't have any other support um, and, and was very much on my own. And to be frank, had been on my own for many years, even before my father passed away. Kind of grew up fast. Um, and so I did the couch surfing thing for a really long time. Um, and then in the way that stories work, I found myself pregnant at 21. So I came back up to the area I was familiar with. I had graduated from Wall and Paul Pack High School, um, and and so this was an area that I knew well. But I was struggling. It was paycheck to paycheck. I wouldn't even call it paycheck to paycheck. I think it was, it was like moment to moment. But we were living in it. Um, and Is got sick and wound up at Janet Weiss Children's Hospital. We were there for about three weeks, um, and. And when I came back, I had no place to stay. Um, and I had lost my job because I didn't show up for a shift. So that is really the moment where I accepted the fact of homelessness. Um, and so there were some really hard moments. Um, there's some moments I talk about and some moments I don't. There was a an ad, a larger ad, like a quarter page ad for the Catherine McCauley Center. And it specifically spoke to women and sheltering. So I was like, oh, and I was I was accepted and, and moved in that evening um, with a gray suitcase. That was everything that um, Isabel and I had at that time was in our gray suitcase, which we still have. It allowed me to learn to stand on my own two feet and start really thinking from moment to moment um, to you know minute to minute and week to week and month to month and year to year, I got to start planning a life. And so Scranton for me means so much because it allowed me to start living a life worth living. For me, Scranton really is the place that like, it's home. Like right now I'm off at Rutgers University off in New Jersey, but I always find my way back here. Oh God, I miss it, you know? Like I just, you know, I miss the familiar sights. I miss, I miss you know, Adezo, I miss Comics on the Green, all of those old uh, places I used to hit up whenever I was down here. But yeah, just honestly, just thanks to my mom, really. This is like the place I was able to foster a wonderful childhood in. A big community that I found myself part of was the arts here with places like Scranton Fringe and Scranton Shakespeare Festival, and even the smaller places like um, Leaders in Training, in which we were able to do uh, these like full theater theatrical productions with these just, you know, scrappy little kids putting on Shakespeare shows. And without them, I really think I just wouldn't be where I was. And it's all because of the Scranton community and the love they hold for each other. I think too, um, unfortunately, living in sometimes living in poverty, you there aren't necessarily um, you're surviving, I guess, and 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 not, you know, there isn't necessarily a cause beyond that. Um, but what allowed me when I started building my life and having the opportunities through the Catherine McCauley Center and then the Women's Resource Center was the empowerment of women um, and each other. Um, and it was career changing for me and it was life changing for me. That idea of picking myself up from my bootstraps and then being able to raise a daughter that then was going out into the community that had a nonprofit through the Scranton Area Community Foundation that was raising funds. It created this myth and legend around who we were. Um, and, and, and we were okay with that, that, that perspective, because it drove good and it drove positive. But I think when we have moments like this where we can share it all, I think it's important. Um, and one of those things is my husband, Doug. He was in my life and he was in Iz's life um, by the time she was six years old. And he has always been there. Um, and, and people would be like, oh, there's Doug. And then be like, at the same time, see an article that's like, single mom does well, <laughs> right? I never did it completely on my own. You know, I've had some circle of people. Um, and then I had a community that was helping me. And I was very lucky to find a man that also was helping me. 
again, he's just such an integral part of our lives that I don't think and I don't even want to imagine what it would be like without him. West Grand was like a second home to me. It was also another community that showed me immense support. I, amazing, like I was able to go to Johnson College to get a certificate in welding. Like that is, you know what I mean? Again, not many people can say that and that's just an honor and just something I'm very proud of saying and that the high school offered that. I learned to go towards opportunity, often you would have to humble yourself. And for me, it was going through public assistance. Unfortunately, you know, the reality at the time, and I know it's still happening in the work that I do each day, is it there is discrimination. And because of, of you know, how I looked at the time, was, which was a young, single white woman with one child, I was afforded opportunities when I had someone you know, traveling that same path, but looked a little bit different, a woman of color with several children, although, you know, fleeing domestic violence um, and not afforded those same opportunities. It's hard to swallow sometimes. I have a hard time talking about it because I know it is still happening in many cases. It's also the micro aggressions and the micro discrimination um, that happens each day that can beat a person down accepting those who are part of the LGBTQIA community, those who have different, those who are of different ethnicities and cultures and religions. We have gone very far, which is certainly an improvement to what it could have been, but I know for a fact we still have some ways to go. I've seen it in my school. I have several LGBTQIA friends. Her, they have faced harassment within the school, which it's one of those things where again, I identify as part of the LGBTQIA. I don't want to say I have a label necessarily, but I do, you know, I, I do identify, and which I am lucky enough where I haven't seen that kind of kickback, but I still think that we as a city still need to step up a bit more and helping the, our community realize that you are safe here and you deserve to be safe. We should just give space for kindness and give space for different, being different and giving, giving space for the idea that people live hard lives. And especially here, um, the work that I do each day um, through the Catherine McCauley Center, because I went home and, and am now the development director there, um, is that it, it doesn't stop. It's still happening each day. Um, I see a lot of reaction here in Scranton about things, a lot of strong feelings, and that could be a wonderful thing, but it can also be a very terrible experience for some. And I think I just wish we just took the time to think a little bit before we reacted. I am proud of my country. I know if we have, you know what I mean? I acknowledge the fact that we have a bit of a horrendous history, but I also think it's so worth to take a look at that history, review it, learn from it, and be like, hey, how could we never ever do this again? And how could we make sure that those affected by this realize that where they are now is never, is not gonna be like what it was before and that they are safe in this country. I was lucky to have a community like Scranton help me, as opposed to where maybe Scranton has failed others. Um, the same with, you know, our region, and then going back to America. Did America fail people? You can understand then, right? If it's, you know, the racial divide, the political divide, culturally, people coming here or fleeing from other areas where their society isn't holding them up. And to come here and hear that it's a dream and it is a nightmare um, can is devastating to me you know but does that cancel out all the good I don't know like I don't know the answer to that I don't I don't know where to sit with that sometimes um, I think we still continue to to figure that out each day I ride